Ago. Amen. Ago. Amen. Okay. Mimi Machi. Mimi Machi. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to say good morning. Machi. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, what a bright day. Everybody's looking cheerful. I'm looking cheerful myself. The lizard says, if you don't praise me, I'll praise myself. <laughs> so when it comes down, he not he not, he, he not for himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's just by the way, uh, I welcome you to this lovely day. And our itinerary is very simple, just two items, uh, including lunch will be three. Uh, I think the, the idea is for us to be able to cut together here by about four-ish. About three o'clock. About uh, three is four-ish. Lunch. The food doesn't take that long to come. It's a billing system. That is very, very long, take a long time. So we are, uh, the general area here we drive through, this was also the places where the Europeans have lived. So you can see some of the buildings, the older buildings, that are on stilts, oh. just as they used uh, those that were the type at Du Bois Center. But the general, generally, the military have a control around this area. So you have, you may see a lot of military installations as we go. But then they're trying to move out, you know. But it's just something they can just move out one because uh, military, whatever they do, you don't know when they live in the area. They have installations that cannot be taken so quite quickly. That is a, a, an example of one of the military facilities to the left. A, for number four, garrison officers mess. That's an officers mess. One thing about when the Europeans bequeathed the, some of the housing project to us, they became the property of the state. Mm. So whatever land the, property, the Europeans have taken, and they were leaving, it became automatically the, the property of the state of Ghana. Now, sometimes, some of the things we do that we have sold out some of these properties mm -hmm. to various individuals. We sold, the state sold them out to various individuals or corporate organizations. Mostly, it was a corporate organization, embassies and other multinational corporations. We went to be driving through the center of town in Kumasi called Edum, that's where we call downtown. Kumasi, downtown, Kumasi. Uh, so we drive through the, the Bank of Ghana area, the central police station, the prisons, and somewhere along the post office area too. Okay. Our main destination this morning is the Manshia Palace. The Manshia is M E N H Y A I. So H Y is Manshia. Don't say Manhia. Manshia. Manshia. Literally meaning state convergence point state meeting grounds where the post office is was an old palace that was where the ashanti kings had their palace mm. now in 1896 that palace was destroyed because in 1896 before the british came and took away the Ashanti king, they had burned all the city, the torch, because we didn't have any iron sheet then. So whatever that was there was just touch. See, so they built, they burnt the whole city. And then the king submitted himself and he was taken to the Seychelles Island. First to the Elmina Castle, then to the Seychelles Island. So that was 
So he stayed in exile for about 28 years. In 1924, they brought him back. When, before they brought him back, then they realized he did not have a palace. So the one we're going to visit today was actually built by the British. They, they built it and offered it to him for free. But he rejected the free offer. What did it come with? No, they just gave it to him. They, 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 they say, we realized you don't have a palace, so they gave it to him. Whatever was to come after that wasn't clear. So he rejected the offer, but said, since the building was on his land, he was offering to pay for the cost of it. He ordered the treasury to pay for the cost of the building to the British. In other words, I contracted you to build it for me. He, Premper the first, lived there, ruled until he died. His nephew, Premper the second, occupied it and ruled until he died. His grand nephew, Otu Opokuare the first, then Opokuare the second, lived there and ruled until 19. This is 75 thereof. He converted the old palace into a museum, a royal museum. We call this museum a moving museum or a living museum. It is a living museum because some of the artifacts that are there are still being used when they are having occasion, festivals and other occasions. They will come and use some of the guns. They cannot fire any longer but then they use them on exhibition. There are gold elements in there, they still use them. Mostly in museum things, you don't, you don't you, you, when they put it in there, except the aspect, you don't go back for it. Because of the fragility of it, uh, it's only the, as the, I mean, the curators, and then, I mean, the monumental people who, who know how to handle those things. Monument people, they, they, they handle it, but here, they use it, so that's how it is. Uh, living museum. It's still being utilized. Inside the museum, there will be no, oh, absolutely no pictures. You can't take, you're not allowed to take pictures. But sometimes, maybe a guide might be of, of a one say you can take picture here. But then just take pictures indiscriminately inside the museum. It's absolutely not allowed. Then we will have the tour, but before we have the tour, we're going to have uh, watched a small documentary on Ashanti, about 12 minutes documentary on Ashanti before we start the tour. This is a royal museum and it's a private museum belonging to the Ashantis. They open it up for us to do so. Let's do something that let's not do something that will upset protocol. So that's so that is the museum visit. Then from the museum, we will come to the, the general area we had lunch. That is a cultural center. It has various uh, artifacts, crafts, and other uh, materials. It's a further way for you to shop and shop and shop. Then we have lunch at I Cafe, right? One more time, I Cafe. We we'll have lunch there. After lunch, uh, depending on how we do with time, we'll get back to the hotel, Batrish, for you to prepare. Let's prepare because tomorrow we have a, a long ride, a long bus ride. Uh, there's a particular town in there, somewhere in the road. Tomorrow is the market day, Thursday. I'm gonna be held out with traffic for some time before. Okay, we're driving from Kumasi to Takuradi. We'll drive past Elmina, Cape Coast Elmina to Takuradi. Then we'll stay in Takuradi for four more, for four days, three nights. Then we come, uh, then we come back to 
Uh, Elmina. Okay. You, you have seen this magazine. It says Sika Dwa. Sika. Sika means money. A dwa. The stool. It means literally golden stool. Sika Dwa. They call it Sika Dwa Kofi. Sika Dwa. Sika Dwa Kofi. Uh, Kofi is a boy male, I mean, a male, a male born on Friday. This stool was revealed on a Friday. The golden stool of Ashanti was revealed on Friday. When I was mentioning the succession of the throne, I said nephew, grand nephew, great, 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 great grand nephew. <clears throat> Ashanti, just by the way I spoke about the conception of human being believe that children belong to the mother because the first two elements are experiences they are abstract you can feel them and you can feel them but you can't touch them so the physical which is blood belong to the, the woman so that is how come children in Asante or Akan group you have you belong to your, your mother so when you go into an account community, don't be concerned about the fathers of children. The mothers is enough. Uh, you know, they're tracing purity of blood. And they, today, purity of blood comes from the woman. Because, just simply, you've never heard about paternity, I mean maternity right of a child. Unless, of course, the woman went somewhere, nobody you are not aware of, she becoming pregnant and she just pops up with a, with a child. That you can trace. But if you are in the community, society, definitely they're going to see you with pregnancy. So that one, there's no doubt with it. What they don't care about is how many men that that child belongs to is not your business. This is my sister's child. She is my, she's got my sister, she's, she's, she was fed by my sister through her blood. So therefore, if we take tracing the purity of blood, you have to get it from your sister. But of, because your wife can actually give you somebody's son or children, which is perfect. They say that it's only the woman that knows the father of the child. That's true. That is true. <laughs> So, and because they don't want to say that, argue, so okay, women, children of women are those who ascend the throne. Oh. So in Ashanti or Akan, female perpetuate family line, not children, not, not men. So if you are a man in Ashanti family, your children go to inherit their uncle, not you. It's your sister's children that will also come and perpetuate the family line. So as more and more girls are born into an Akan family, the more happier they are because they know the family line is going to go grow longer for a long time. But as more and more boys are being born into a family, as a camp family, then they are worried because they are having, they start a danger of the family going into uh, being distinct. So that is how the Akan society is. There are exceptions though, but the norm is they inherit for, 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 for left and go. But uh, the, the norm is that it has to be the children of female. Can I ask you to stop when we get to a point, then we record. Okay, at this point, I'm not going to do presentation, but I'll just show you. On the left-hand side is the 